As we continue our journey through the endomembrane system and as we look at cell structure, we'll begin this next flowchart by entitling it EMS2. And this next flowchart will be devoted to one of the main players of the endomembrane system. It is known as the endoplasmic reticulum. Very fancy word. You've probably heard of it before. Very fancy term. But from this point forward, we'll just call it ER to save ourselves some time. So the endoplasmic reticulum. One thing you want to understand before you even get into the idea of what the ER is, is understand what the term lumen means because this is going to be an important part of the ER. Lumen simply defines itself as an internal space. Any internal space is considered a lumen. Your heart has a lumen. Your kidney has a lumen. Your skull has a lumen. That's going to be our internal space. One of the main components of a lumen we have to understand is that the ER itself has a lumen. So the ER lumen, that internal space of the ER in relation to the ER, is a single continuous space. Make sure we understand that. It's a single continuous space. So that's what our lumen is. A lumen is simply an internal space. The ER has a lumen and that lumen is single and continuous. That's an important note because now we can understand its structure a little bit better. The endoplasmic reticulum, um, specifically its membrane we can talk about, the ER membrane is actually connected to the nuclear envelope. Connected to nuclear envelope, um, outer membrane specifically of the nuclear envelope. So let's break down this definition a little bit, this term. So the ER membrane, so the ER has a membrane, why does it have a membrane? It's part of the endomembrane system, of course, and so everything at part of the system has a membrane. It's connected to, why would it be connected to the nuclear envelope? Because remember, the, one of the goals of the system was to promote intracellular communication. And that was done through, let's say, physical continuity. The ER membrane, we can say, is physically continuous with the nuclear envelope, specifically the outer membrane. Why is just the outer membrane? Remember, the nuclear envelope is a double membrane. It has an inner and an outer. The outer specifically is connected to the ER membrane. So. The next point of topic is the two types of endoplasmic reticulum. So there are two types of ERs, and you've probably heard of this term before. The first type that we'll go over is the rough ER, otherwise known as the RER. The RER is known as the rough ER because this is where ribosomes are attached. And do you remember what we call those attached ribosomes? Attached ribosomes are otherwise known as bound ribosomes and they're bound to the endoplasmic reticulum. If they're bound to the endoplasmic reticulum, it is known as the rough ER. So what happens in this area? A good way to understand what's going on at the rough ER is to go through a stepwise process. Simply speaking, what happens, of course, what happens at the ribosomes? Think of the ribosomes as the first step of this process involving the RER and its relation to the EMS. So the ribosomes, what are they going to do? They're going to synthesize proteins, so we'll write protein synthesis as step one. Once the ribosomes make a nice protein for us, that protein is going to undergo step two. That step two is to travel through a translocon. So we'll write that down. Travel through what is known as a translocon. Let me write that a little bit clearer. Translocon. Translocon is just another word to say pore. But specifically, if the RER is attached, if the ribosomes are attached to the RER, there's going to be a pore in which the ribosome can sort of dump a protein so that that protein can travel through. Once it travels through, what do you expect it to hit? It's obviously, if it's attached to the rough ER, it's going to hit the RER. But let's be more specific. If, it, if I told you that it enters an open space of the RER, what would you say? It would obviously then enter the ER lumen. And it does this because this is where it's going to be folding. So ER lumen, this is where we're going to have folding. ER lumen, let's say, for folding. That's step three. Step four now, now we get into our endomembrane system a little bit more. We are now going to be that protein is going modified and folded. Remember, we started off as a protein. It's modified and folded in the ER. Once it's done, once it's done that, it's now transferred. 
Remember, it's transferred because we're promoting intracellular communication. The cell is going through this process so that different parts of the cell can talk to each other. It's transferred um, via vesicle. But what does a vesicle do? A vesicle always buds. So it's transferred via vesicle budding. It enters the ER lumen, goes through it, and then buds off. Once it buds off, it's going to now go to step five, which I'll write over here, is reach a target membrane. Because remember, once that vesicle buds off from our previous video, it can now reach a new membrane and then attach on and then sort of fuse together. So this is what's going on at the rough ER. This is the main sort of idea behind the rough ER. Now you start to see the theme of the endoplasmic reticulum, um, excuse me, of the endomembrane system sort of embodied by the rough ER. The next part of the endoplasmic or the other type of endoplasmic reticulum is the smooth ER. And this one we'll just label as S-E-R. This is one that you as a college student should be very, very thankful for. And we'll see why in just a second. The smooth ER actually contains no ribosomes, so we'll write no ribo. Makes sense, right? It's smooth doesn't have those bumps, those ribosomes, those bound ribosomes. The smooth ER is in charge of lipid synthesis. So that means that they, it makes the lipids that are necessary for us, like let's say cholesterol. Remember cholesterol was a steroid. That steroid synthesis mostly occurs at the smooth ER, and it's also involved in lipid synthesis and metabolism. Metabolism is just a fancy way of saying breaking down something. So metabolism, breaking down and absorbing. Once you have a lipid within your body, it is broken down and mainly absorbed in the area known as the smooth ER. What we want to focus on when we look at the smooth ER, and interestingly enough, are liver cells. Liver cells have tons and tons of smooth ER many, many smooth ER are located at the liver cells. But why is this? The liver cells, first of all, what we want to note is that the liver cells are actually going to be this point at which glycogen is broken down. Glycogen is broken down before we get into that toxicity. Like glycogen is broken down here at the liver cells, specifically what part of the liver cells that smooth ER. That's just a side note that we want to make sure we understand. But more importantly, liver cells are absolutely in charge of detox, detoxifying the body. How does it do this? Most of the time, liver cells will add a OH group. What is this group called again? Remember our functional groups? This is called a hydroxyl group to increase solubility. Now, we're going to combine some things that we learned in our previous lectures, okay? This is sort of building on knowledge. We're taking a OH group and adding it onto something to detoxify it. How does that make any sense? That OH group is going to increase solubility. What is solubility? Solubility is the ability to sort of dissolve and sort of become less dangerous. Why would OH group be a good group to add on to increase solubility? Think of this OH group. What do you notice about it? It has what? This magical oxygen, right? And that oxygen is electronegative, and that means it's polar. That means it's going to promote mixing with other polar things. Your body is mostly going to mix it with water, mixes it with water, so we have something dangerous. Let's say this is um, this X represents our dangerous compound. We attach an OH group to it. H2O can come in and say, oh, nice, I see something very soluble. I'm going to come in, and I'm going to sort of make this less dangerous. That's the sort of uh, very basic way to understand what detox is. In addition, the liver cells, specifically the smooth ER, are in charge of looking at and taking care of alcohol and drugs. So, I mentioned earlier that we as college students, and I'm not accusing anybody of course, should be very thankful for our smooth ERs because this is where alcohol and drugs are sort of detoxified. They're made less harmful. The harmfulness of alcohol and drugs are sort of combated at the smooth ER because the smooth ER is in charge of detox. And it does it in a variety of ways. One of the ways is this. We don't need to get into the other details. In addition, what we notice is that when you have more smooth ER, S-E-R, you actually have more tolerance. So you develop tolerance to alcohol and drugs 
as you develop more and more SER, and that proves to us that SER is in, absolutely in charge of figuring out what to do with alcohol and drugs. So overall, now that we understand the second part of our endomembrane system, the endoplasmic reticulum, I just want to make sure we understand that this is an overall sort of connected system that's involved very involved with other parts of the EMS, which we'll get into later. The endoplasmic reticulum has a lumen, and we understand that a lumen is just an internal space. And that internal space is definitely utilized at the rough ER section of our, of our endoplasmic reticulum, because look over here. We have to go into our lumen at step three. And also, we understood that um, the rough ER was called the rough ER because the ribosomes are attached. And we also looked at the smooth ER. The smooth ER did not have ribosomes. That's why it's smooth. It's the site, I would definitely know, that it's the site of lipid synthesis and metabolism. And I would also know that it's mainly in charge of detoxifying harmful substances like alcohol and drugs within the human body and anybody, whatever, may be consuming drugs or something dangerous, uh, something with increased toxicity. And that covers our endoplasmic reticulum.